Hello everyone. Welcome to Scholar School System University College Center. My name is Saladin Simon. Today we are going to discuss the Unit 3 Learning Outcome 2 Human Resource Management. Let us discuss regarding the access, the contribution of human resource management in recruiting and retaining talent and skill to achieve business objective. Workforce planning. It is a systematic process for identifying and addressing the gap between the workforce of today and human capital needs for tomorrow. This planning enables the organization to align the workforce requirement directly to the agency's strategic and the annual business plans, develop a comprehensive picture of where the gaps exist between the competencies and the workforce currently possess and future competency requirements. And also it identify and implement gap reduction strategies, make decision about how best to the structure of the organization and deploy the workforce. And finally, identify and overcome the internal and external barriers to accomplish the strategic workforce goal. There are five steps to analyzing the workforce planning. The first one is the strategic direction. This step involves linking the workforce planning process with the strategic plan, annual performance, business plan, and work activities required to carry out the goals and objectives of the organization and also for the performance plan. The second step is to supply analysis. In here, determining what current workforce resources are and how they are evolved over time through the turnover. Developing specification of all the kinds, numbers, location of the workers, managers needed to accomplish the organization strategic requirements. And also it determines what gap exists between the current and projected workforce need. The third one is the demand analysis. In here, the steps involve the identification of strategies to close gaps and plan to implement these strategies and measure for assessing the strategic progress. These strategies could include such as recruiting, training, restructuring the organization, and succession planning. It also involves technological in enhancement. In the step four, this is the gap analysis. In gap analysis, in here, the steps involve that ensuring the human and physical resources are placed and roles are understood and necessary communication, marketing and coordination is occurring to execute the plan and achieving the strategic objectives. Afterwards, for the solution implement, the, after the assessing the necessary analysis, the plan is implemented in the step five. In the monitoring and evaluating process in the final stage, it involves against the milestone and assessing for continuous improvement purposes and adjusting the plan to make sure the course correction and to address new workforce issues. Let us discuss the workforce planning a little bit more detail. If you can see that in the supply projection, there are it is the current state of the baseline of the organization where the workforce profile, business outlook, and the number of staffing and company strategies and competencies are reviewed. Then the company is also review the future state of the vision. That, is, that means the demand forecast. What will be the projected workforce? What will be the future workloads? And what are the skills and competency needed in the future? Of course, the technological evolution is also needed for the demand forecasting. Based on the current state of the baseline and the future state of the vision, there is a business strategy is implemented for from the human resource management as you can see it is a supply projection it is called supply analysis 
where it is focusing on identifying the organizational competencies, analyzing the staff demographics, and identify the employment trends. In the below, in the future, the demand analysis also measure the future activities and the workloads and describing the competencies set needed by the workforce for, of the future. Based on the company strategies of the baseline of the current state and future state, we can see there are several questions are asked. What are the competencies of the workforce? What are the current situation for the labor market? How the organization move in the future and current state? What will be the business activity or model? And what will be the projected needs in future and current? The impact of the changes, whether there is, will be any changes for the technological change or for, for organizational restructure. Then if there's any change will be happen due to technology roadmap. So current, considering these factors, the workforce planning implementation made based on the uh, like several years. There are key question are asked one is that approach will be how your organization will be goal will be to reduce the gap what will be the challenges and what are the benefits to change the workforce planning and how the metrics will work assessing the skill and capabilities using audit and gap analysis for identifying talent and skill gap what is skill gap means the skill gap is a tool to assess the difference between the actual state and future state goal state. Let us start by exploring what we mean when we use the term skill gap. In reality short, it is the difference between the skill needed to do a particular job and those are available. However, as we will see, it can impact in different level of job industry. For the individual, the skill mismatch means some people don't have the right skills and jobs available. For example, in the UK, it shows that 40% of the UK workers don't have the right qualification for the current job. This means that some people are underqualified, some are overqualified. For the business, the skill gap is also a problematic they are finding the talent pools are limited in certain areas and profession, meaning the role are taking longer to fill. This lack of qualified personnel has also several impacts in the business. As we can see for the, for the human resource management, the skill gap analysis is a find out which skills and knowledge are lacking among the employees in the organization. Once they identify this, the HR can address the skill gap for the organization, and this can be done by upskilling, reskilling, and LD investment decision, and also the succession planning, and so on. Step for the skill gap analysis. It is a technique used by the organization to measure the gap between the skill needed and skill currently acquired by the individual working here there. The HR assesses the skill gap for the employees so that they can see the performance and evaluate the lacking knowledge in the field. The first thing we can see, the company try to identify the root cause for the productivity reduction. Then they map the skill that are currently in the team. Afterwards, they conduct a performance gap and skill gap analysis. In the fourth stage, they get a targeted training program in the place. Afterwards, they set a performance expectation from the first day to see what happened after the training implementation. Then they monitor the progress of the performance of the employee and keep working their organizational culture to see what they are productive in their workforce and create a rewards and recognition system who are achieving exceeding expectation and maintain a high expectation and the employee engagement. In the last time, 
in the last stage, they try to develop a future leader as per the succession planning. What is the importance of the skill gap? Based on this graph, we can see that in 2002, the physical and manual skill percentage was 33%. By 2030, it is predicted that it will be reduced like 11% and it will become a 26% workforce. That means the employers in the UK, they, want, they can see that manual job is decreasing and more hard skill as we can see in here it is increasing why it is important it gives the inside the entire the workforce what where is the skill gap it increases the individual learning and development it helps the organization for strategic workforce planning it can also improve the recruitment efforts by the human resource management and finally it can create a competitive advantage towards the organization recruitment and selection it is a process for identifying the need for the job defining the requirement for the position and the job holders by advertising the position and selecting the right candidates for the job there are different recruitment models the first thing is on demand recruitment another is contingency hiring retain research and exclusive exclusive requirement and the final one is recruitment process outsourcing source of recruitment there are two ways an organization can recruit candidates first thing is that internal source another is external source we are trying to discuss that internal source that where the suitable candidates are given the post from the, within the organization the internal source include it could be from the transfer from one department to another department then it could be another way to source of the employees by the promotion from the same organization and another way it could be like a referral screen which could be recommendation of the existing employees there is another way the organization can recruit people from the external sources which could be advertisement in the online or through agencies or it could be social media like linkedin second is the school and colleges and universities for hiring the fresh graduate and it could be recruit from the recruiting agencies another way it could be like a central application file like a database of the applicant which are previously unsuccessful candidates and the last one is the former employee who are retired or resigned from the post they can be contacted by personally and they can be they can be recruited for their suitable post the stages of the recruitment and selection process which can be categorized into four eight steps the first step is to identify a need or vacancy within the company where the line manager can identify the vacancy and he can recommend to the hr team to recruit a suitable person to fill the vacancy the second is to create the job description the third is to decide on recruiting model, which recruiting model will be followed, whether it could be internal or external. Then the fourth step is to accepting the CV and save in the database. The fifth is stage, screening the CVs and try to make a short list for the suitable candidate. In the sixth stage, carrying out the staff selection process which could be carried out from the written application written examination and it could be like an interview process afterwards to create a report file for the each candidates who could be hired who are potential candidate for hiring or who will be rejected these are the stage in the seventh stage and afterwards the organization take the final decision for recruiting right candidate 
let us discuss that what are the factors influencing the retention. The first thing is that training. This is the way it is influencing the retention program. The second thing is the flexibility. The third thing is the financial insecurity. And the fourth one is the work-life balance. The fifth is the management. And the sixth one is the recognition. Every organization would like to retain their skilled employees, which are not can be easily replaceable. And secondly, new recruitment process could be expensive and time consuming. And also to find a right candidate could be a challenging. There are a number of factors which can be affect the employee satisfaction and willingness to stay in the organization. Thank you so much for hearing.